Starting in 2020, a network of nonprofits, students, government agencies, and citizen scientists started capturing images of wildlife using trail cameras. The network's goals are to collect and share data on wildlife populations, monitor species sensitive to climate change, and give students real world training. So we're here at the camera site, and what we're trying to do is have animals that are passing through the area actually come to the site so we can detect them with the camera and get a good photograph of the animals. We use two different types of attractants. One is a visual attractant, which we'll see here in a minute. It's actually a turkey feather. And this turkey feather will be um, fastened to the top of this snow stake. And just the movement of that feather in the wind is going to attract animals to come over and investigate. We're also using an olfactory, olfactory attractant, which is skunk lure. And the skunk lure is placed into these small canisters and then we will attach these small canisters to the back of the snow stake. And so this will um, attract not only the carnivores to this location, but even some of the herbivores like deer and moose and snowshoe hare will come in to investigate that novel smell and then we'll capture them on film. ESF has had a field campus here in Newcomb for 90 years and we have a lot of data. We already know a lot about this part of the Adirondacks. So one of the benefits of us working here is not so much that it's novel that we might find a fisher or a black bear, but more that we have data that goes back many, many decades on climate change in terms of looking at snowpack, precipitation, temperature, seasonal affecting uh, you know, events such as when do the trees bud out? When do the leaves fall? When's the first snow? And so being able to combine what we already know about the system with this new big landscape scale question about where are the animals? What are they doing on the landscape? What happens when we get a big snow? What happens when it melts or rains? That's gonna be a huge opportunity for us to take what we already know about the Adirondacks and really expand on it and hopefully get a lot more information than what we've had previously. Because one of the things that we found is that the snow models and the, and the precipitation and the other data we have for the park um, there really only are a handful of sites where we collect that kind of data and it's very good but it doesn't really extrapolate well across the whole region because it's mountainous and its terrain is very varied and the precipitation as you know changes a lot from east to west and as you go up in elevation so if we can get a lot of these monitoring stations out and the cameras tell us something we can take a picture every day and even if an animal doesn't walk by we might have information on the snowpack as it grows and shrinks and changes. And so that's gonna be tremendously important for our modeling people that can then say, what's this gonna look like in five or 10 or 50 years?